Hey, Melvin Gala, it's been too long. Oh, listen, folks, I'm going to be absolutely 100% honest with you tonight. When I became a dad, I worried that this malarkey would mean less to me. I genuinely thought comedy would mean less to me. I thought that the, the frivolous notion of making people laugh would pale into insignificance compared to the far more vital job of raising two small boys and turning them into the men I want them to be. But I gotta tell you folks, as both a husband and a father, I need this more than ever. <laughs> As a man who's been married now for 15 years and been a dad for 13 of those years, it is so important for me to feel, even if it's just for the next four minutes, like somebody is listening to a fucking word I am saying. <laughs> this is like oxygen. I've got lights pointed at me. I get respect here. I feel if there was some litter there or a bottle or something, I said, mate, would you mind picking it up? You might do it. You're not going to look at me and go, well, I didn't put it there, but that's the shit I got at home. <laughs> I have two kids. I have a 13-year-old and an 11-year-old. There's 17 months in the age difference. My wife didn't want there to be too big a gap, so she had them both by cesarean. <laughs> Come on. That is a good joke. That is not a nice joke. Put it in his stomach. <laughs> think about kids, right? They're, they're part of you, right? And you, you, you see yourself in them. But it, sometimes, sometimes you'll actually hear your own exact words come out of your child's mouth. And that is not nice. Right? I'll give you an example of this. Right? First bit of background, I'm sure a lot of you don't have kids, you won't know this, but young kids, pretty sort of six, seven, eight, that kind of age, a lot of times they'll ask a question. And before they've even finished asking the question, they've already decided they don't give a shit what the answer is. <laughs> So you'll answer their question, and, and they're, they're almost looking at you like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're not answering that question I asked you. That, I'm sorry, my life's moved on since then. I'm a different person now. <laughs> and they'll go, oh, maybe I do want to know the answer to that question. And they'll answer it, and they'll, they'll ask the same question again. And like a mug, you'll answer that same question again. But the third or fourth time our kids ask the same question, me and my wife now, we have a stock answer. We just go, do you know what? I've answered that question already. I'm not going to answer it again. It's a bit arsy. It's hardly child abuse. The kids have good lives. However, <laughs> what it leads to is what it led to. My, my elder son, Cosmo, that's right, Cosmo, awesome name. No, you're a showbiz wanker. Cosmo, <laughs> he's eight years old. He's got another mate in the house, also eight years old, on a play date. My kid is showing this kid the game of Minecraft on an iPad, because this kid's never seen Minecraft, because his parents live under a rock. Oh, have you brought a little Amish boy home to play? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Jebediah. Anyway, <laughs> Cosmo showing this kid how to play Minecraft. The kid asks a question about how something happens in the game. Cosmo answers the question in a way I didn't even understand, and I play the game. So the poor kid asks the question again. And after hearing my eight-year-old son say to his eight-year-old mate, do you know what? I've answered that question already. I'm not going to answer it again. <laughs> Oh, mate, no, what have I done? So, cut to me putting my son to bed that night, tucking an eight-year-old boy into bed. I have to explain to an eight-year-old boy how if he talks to other people the way I talk to him, <laughs> other people will think he's a dickhead. That's a tricky conversation. That takes finesse. Seriously, son, we spoke to him. You really sounded like a dickhead. But I was just talking to him the way you talk to me. Yeah, life's not fair. <laughs> That's what we're learning tonight. Does that mean you and mummy are dickheads? No. Funnily enough, when I retell this story, I will very much make you out to be the dickhead in it. Yeah. <laughs> so you and mummy aren't dickheads? I've answered that question already. I'm not gonna answer it again. <laughs> I'm a terrible parent. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good night.